Fourth of July, Fourth of Stranger Things. Hmm. Uh, they're back, man. I mean, <laughs> Stranger Things, the, the crew, Mike, Will, Eleven, Lucas, Max, and Dustin. I mean, the fact that I can like list their names off, I think, speaks to mm-hmm. the fact that Stranger Things has really moved into the consciousness of just the public of about of culture in in 2019, and uh, you know. I didn't really feel super excited for this season coming up. We talked a little bit about our expectations and things we were um, kind of looking for. You know, when we were talking about what, what was coming up uh, in 2019 for TV. I think I jumping back into it, I found that what I really look for when I watch the show is just being with these characters that are fun to be with. Um, and this season, especially because we're only going to talk about the first half, we'll review the second half. Uh, so either next week or the week after um, I didn't find myself enjoying being with some of them as much but I think that's because of the age they're at now like someone like Mike I found myself being like fuck Mike a lot <laughs> like, <laughs> such a little prick um, you know Hopper, species doc <laughs> um, Hopper uh, some of his stuff works for me and some of it is really a, a bit grating uh, still Stan David Harbour though he's just always mm-hmm. fun to be around um but yeah it, it, they had this flashback i think it was in episode three when will is got is really upset and he's thinking about back to like season one these memories they had and they when they showed them and how yeah. young they were i was yeah. like damn how it's crazy that they were that young and this is where we're at with them how are you feeling just uh temperature check on strangers thing season three and being back with the gang yeah uh I like this season because it definitely feels like a continuation, a uh, true progression of the story of the characters. Mm-hmm. Part of that is they are older and acting older as well. Mm-hmm. But also because season two, which was lar- largely plotted out um, before season one took off and became that unexpected you know, blockbuster show. Um, season two was just kind of like season one B. You know, mm-hmm. it, it was a bit of more of the same. And then the one big swing swing they did, the lost sister episode was quite polarizing and just kind of felt like it was from a different place, different show, but now getting back, I think just the the hangs is why I'm there. And Mm -hmm. even if, you know, Mike, at least in the first half of the season that we're discussing, uh, isn't as likable. I just want to be with these characters and see what they're doing. Yeah, you know, and the relationships they have with everyone, mm-hmm. and at least the way the season is uh, started, I think they're following up on that because they're taking a lot of things that were cool in season two and actually developed them in a smart way. You know, the Barb grief in season two felt manufactured because Barb was an unexpected like viral meme from season yeah. one, but I think in this season, you know, we have more of. Um, Dustin and uh, Joe Keery hanging out Mm -hmm. and that's they're they're really fun together so why not do that some more right Um, obviously the relationship stuff is there but you know we also have uh, uh, Winona Ryder having a bit of PTSD with uh, Sean Astin who dies Mm -hmm. too and it it just it truly feels like a sequel season which I like Um, the upside down framing of it all i think it's still you know just kind of up and down because sometimes it just feels like it gets in the way of uh what's more fun which is just the hanging and the relationships and everything and especially because through four episodes you know they kind of just repeat what they've done before specifically what's uh heat up billy yeah expel the uh what do you call it the 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 monster from him Mm -hmm. which we had seen before and it just feels like Eleven needs to be the uh, Deus Ex Machina of all conflicts. Because mm-hmm. she's the only one who obviously can do anything about it. But even if it's familiar, it's such a fun show. And obviously the the 80s window dressing is done so thoughtfully and looks so great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, just, it's just fun for the hangs, you know. And also yeah. one other thing that happened in season two that they leaned into was the uh, Mrs. Wheeler and Billy yeah uh, sexual tension which what about bono though what about bono though so <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh bono just 
chef's kiss. She's incredible in this show um, in, in a lot of ways. But I, I agree that the hangs is what you're here for. And you do a lot of hanging out in malls in this, which feels very um, appropriate, especially yeah. for, you know, that that time period and what a lot of people were doing. Um, but it also adds this really fun element about like seeing these old stores, even if they're like knockoffs, what the actual stores were like, you know, Hoy is obviously supposed to be like a Baskin Robbins type place or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, it, it's really, uh, fun to be back with this group. And I, I actually want to challenge one thing you said, cause Billy, yeah, they, they heat him up. He becomes the villain, but I think they actually are adding a little more gravitas to the demigorgons because you see at the end of episode four that there's sure. like dozens of people, um, which adds this element of the demigorgon being just this like overarching, like monster kind of like CGI, whatever, and brings it back a little bit more to like the human aspect, which I think can make it a little bit more interesting potentially for the end of the season. Um, I do think, you know, uh, L being the, the deus ex machina is something that the show doesn't really know how to write around right now, um, no, unless you bring in her sisters uh, or the other experiment or her siblings, yeah. whatever they are, the test yeah. experiments. But we don't know if they're going to do that. Um, so definitely some... Uh, things to be looking out for um what, what characters you've you mentioned like joe carey um steve and, and dustin together what other characters have you really enjoyed this season so far oh i've really liked um what's her name who's hanging out with them maya hawk's character robin robin yeah the 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 child of uma thurman and ethan hawk by the way yeah. uh, her i think it's her first first show role she's she's awesome yeah uh, and just another like, it was just another smart addition to the ensemble. The same way Max felt so effortless when the way she was added in last season. Mm -hmm. um, so I really liked everything they got going on. Even Dustin's uh, sister, who or it's not uh, uh, fuck, what's Mike's name? sister? No, uh, Kay McLaughlin, his little sister with the ice cream. Um, oh, Lucas's sister. Yeah, she also had a bit of a, a virality to her in a few small moments in season two, bringing her in, but actually not doesn't, doesn't feel forced this time around. Mm -hmm. It's it just, I just like the way they've slowly expanded everything. And as you said, the star court mall is a great setting. So is the pool for that matter. Yeah. You know, I like that. We're not, I like it's summer. I like that. We're not in the school again. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're, we're kind of past the, fish out of water stuff with 11, even if she still doesn't know how to speak complete sentences for some reason. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I also, I, I like how Billy is uh, more involved because he really felt in season two, like he had a purpose in a previous draft and it was just kind of cut. So he was just kind of really one dimensional goon figure that was just kind of there. I like that. He's at least being used as the host the bad of sorts. Yeah. So that's smart. And I think Dacre Montgomery is pretty, pretty compelling in that as well. And even before that, because he's so shredded, the, the whole uh, bit with Mrs. Wheeler is just hilarious. Yeah. And all the moms just in general. Yeah. <laughs> um, Hi, Billy. Yeah. I, I also really like what they've done with Quill, because if you think about the, the natural way that things come about as you're a teenager, is there are, you know, those, those, friends or those people in the friend group who kind of move forward and start looking to the other aspects of life and those that stay a little bit more ingrained in their childhood um, a little bit longer and, and that conflict that arises. But then you also bring about the idea that maybe Will is gay or bisexual mm -hmm. or something outside of just being a straight white kid, white male is pretty interesting and something that they're obviously thinking about. Um, and the conflict of, you know, he was basically sidelined for two seasons. Yeah. He, got, he got the He's Doug. A tough hang through two <laughs> seasons. It's for real. Yeah. He got the Doug in the hangover treatment where they're just like, we're just going to put you out of frame and let the other people cook. Um, it's nice to like see them realistically deal with it where these other kids have kind of moved on and he's kind of like stuck in that like phase he was before he went to a coma for two years, basically, or, or two school years. So, um, some really, I, I thought, I think some really well done stuff. And I, I also really like all the relationship stuff. I find it very funny and very like kiddish, like even like watching them like kiss sometimes it, it's very, it's very well done. It's like little kid, like, ki or like yes. early, like teenage kissing. So they, they really do it very tastefully and Hopper wanting the door open three inches uh, yeah. is a, a pretty good bit. So 
definitely some some good stuff there. How do you feel about Nancy and Jonathan? I think they're they're they're, they're been the weak links thus far, just because they're not as fun to be around. Um, their relationship is it's okay, I guess. Um, I think most people want her to be with Steve. Um, I think that's probably not happening now. It's fine, but in the meantime. At least they're doing stuff that's like involved in the main plot, but they haven't interacted with really the rest of the cast at all. Yeah. It's just those two and Mrs. Wheeler and other people that doesn't interact with the rest of the cast, like the people at the, po- the paper and stuff. So just want to see where that's going. But yeah, they're, they're um, they're just, I don't know. Cause like now they're having relationship trouble again, or they've split whatever it is. And, I don't know. It just feels like we, we we're kind of spinning some wheels again with them mm-hmm. just because maybe they don't know more interesting way to integrate them. I don't know. I mean, it makes sense that we have distinct arcs and storylines and not everyone's hanging out as one big mob, obviously, mm-hmm. but that just lends itself to certain plot points being more compelling than others. I think that's where we're at right now with Nancy and Jonathan. No, I agree. Um, definitely very interested to see, where the rest of the season goes, and we'll be reviewing that. Any last thoughts on the first half before we move on? Yeah, I'm just very, uh, very, very uh, happy to keep watching. I think that this this is a strong start. I thought the premiere of season three was quite good. Um, and yeah, even though I wasn't like like you, I wasn't like super anticipating the return. Uh, once you're back, it's just fun to be back with that show. And I think yeah. that just kind of speaks to the. Uh, the world building, even if it's largely uh, mimicking, you know, the past, it's not like a right. creation. It's still uh fun nonetheless. So very, very pleased thus far. Yeah. The, the time, the time frame of the show is so important because you think about if this happened now, like cell phones fix a lot of these issues, these communication issues very quickly. Right. 